Welcome back to Training Week 2. With this Unit 6, I will continue to introduce Business Partner and CVI. In this session, I will provide information about customer vendor integration and synchronization. My name is Alexander Röbel. Let's get started with Unit 6. One fundamental piece of information is that only SAP Business Suite customers with customer vendor integration in place can move to SAP S4HANA on-premise edition. All the customers, vendors and their contacts must be converted to business partners. Here we see the main approaches to get to S4HANA, the greenfield and the conversion approach. On one hand, we have the greenfield implementation where we follow the data migration approach. Respective customer and vendor master data must be uploaded as business partners. CBI takes care to synchronize them to customers and vendors. Data cleansing, business partner and CBI setup has to be done as a prerequisite. On the other hand, and more important for this course, is to discuss the conversation approach. In this case, existing SAP ERP system with all its data will be converted into an S4HANA system. We have learned in our recent session that CVI synchronization from customer and vendor to business partner is only available in ERP. Due to this fact, it is necessary to synchronize all customers, vendors and contact persons in ERP. There is a strict pre-check in the conversion for all these objects to be converted into business partners. So, What does all mean? All means 100% of them in all clients of the respective system. If there is only one customer, vendor or contact person that not has been linked to a business partner, the S4 conversion stops. Now let me briefly introduce what is required in this conversion scenario. In the next slides, I will highlight some more details. As all historical data will be synchronized, it is required to clean up the existing master data. The less data that needs to be converted, the less errors and inconsistencies need to be handled. With regard to setup and customizing, it has to be done twice. Once in ERP for synchronizing customers and vendors to business partners, and once again where we adapted for S4HANA for the synchronization of business partners to customers and vendors. Once data cleansing and ERP setup are done, we can execute mass synchronization to business partners. After this mass synchronization, CVI is running continuously in background. Errors from mass synchronization and CVI are locked in the post-processing office, or PPO. CVI can be considered as an interface. To monitor the interface, you have to check the PPO. This must be cleared completely before S4HANA conversion. During S4 conversion, there is nothing to be executed from business partner and CVI perspective. But after S4 conversion, within the business downtime, some steps need to be done. One is the setup of S4HANA specific customizing. The other important step is to carry out the first run of the HCM sync report. Often this is influenced by and itself influences the business partner and CVI setup. After go live, you have to proceed with monitoring the CVI interface by checking the PPO. On this slide, uh, I will explain the considerations for the mass synchronization of customers and vendors in ERP. One of the first steps is to plan and organize the point in time and the duration of this mass synchronization. Usually, the mass synchronization is executed together with the activation of the CVI in the ERP system. What needs to be considered? You should plan how much time it is required to execute the data cleansing and to run one or more test cycles. There is no fixed recommendation when to activate CVI and do the mass synchronization. We recommend doing it in sufficient time before the S4HANA conversion so as not to be on the critical path with CVI. It can be considered as an own pre-project. From our experience, 
It can be done days or weeks before as for HANA conversion. We have supported some customers doing this up to a year before conversion. We also recommend uh, scheduling business downtime for CVI activation and mass synchronization. The main reason is to stop all interfaces exchanging a respective master data to external systems. The mass synchronization has the potential to send all objects again and to block these interfaces. Due to other reasons, for example, some historical data has to be handled with special setup, it is preferable to have control of the environment. The synchronization itself is executed with the so-called MDS Load Cockpit. MDS stands for Master Data Synchronization. I cannot provide an average figure for the required runtime. This depends very much on the environment, for example, number of customers, vendors, and contact persons, and on available system resources. The duration should be estimated or extrapolated with test cycles. In my projects, I advise executing the mass synchronization completely. This means that I always check and clean up the PPO for any errors. In doing so, I am on the safe side when handing over the system the, uh, to the business after the business downtime. As CVI is activated, now the check of the PPO should be introduced as a permanent monitoring task. This situation will remain after S4 conversion. I will elaborate on some details of the MDS load cockpit with my next slide. The MDS load cockpit is used for the mass synchronization of customers and vendors to business partners. There is no separate object for the contact persons, as they are considered as a part of, or rather an appendix, of the leading master data object. Depending on your setup, you can synchronize various objects. For CVI purposes, we need the options customer to business partner and vendor to business partner. When selecting an option, you can define here your selection criteria. For example, you can split the customers by number, account group, or deletion flag. You can use this area to control the mass synchronization. With regards to block size, yeah, um, this figure defines the number of customers and vendors per update or commit. If contacts are assigned to them, then they will be added to the block size. This figure is for performance fine-tuning. 50 is usually a good approach. With number of tasks or number of processes, uh, the mass synchronization can be split into parallel tasks. Although background processing uh, is flagged, this is the number of dialog tasks for processing the updates. The MDS load cockpit itself would generate inbound queued RFCs if, if the flag background processing is checked. These queues consume dialog tasks when being processed. In this area, you can manage the queue monitoring, call the PPO, and display log entries for the run you selected. I have already mentioned that data cleansing is one of the major tasks to prepare activation of CVI. At one point in the past, you will have started with consistent master data, consistent at this time. Over time, you will continuously have been adding new master data. This itself could lead to errors or mistakes. In addition, new checking rules were implemented or checking rules were changed. These rules apply to new or recently changed master data objects only. Now, we start a full synchronization of all customers, vendors, and contact persons. With immediate effect, all currently valid rules apply to the full data set. This also happens when data is being migrated. They usually have the same history. The question is how to detect 
the master data issues and how to solve them. The best option to identify these issues is to run a test cycle for mass synchronization. In this case, it wouldn't be necessary to convert the system to S4HANA. The best way to do this test would be in a sandbox as a fresh copy of the productive system. In addition, there's the option to identify the issues using a customer's own Z report, either based on past experiences or on the test results from sandboxes. Such a report would also provide the option to check the progress of data cleansing on a regular basis in a productive system. The solution to the data issues depends on the issue itself. For certain categories, you might use mass change transactions like XD99 and XK99. For some of the issues, reports with a certain logic would be required. But for sure, some data can only be corrected manually. In addition, SAP provides a separate product to cleanse data. Here, for example, we would talk about data services with the scope of data stewardship. But this would be a topic of its own. I always talk about the topics of business partner and CBI together. In fact, these are two topics, and each of them requires a separate setup and considerations. On the left side of the slide, you see the settings and options for setting up the business partner in general. Examples are define number assignments, roles, etc., and to check and to integrate uh, customer and vendor enhancements. On the right side, you see the main settings that are required for mapping customers and vendors to business partners, and vice versa. In addition to that, you should activate a certain business function SAP ERP to consider contact persons and you must activate the PPO. The areas are relevant for both S4 conversion and the greenfield approach. During the actual S4 conversion, for example, the Zoom run, there is nothing to do for the business partner in CVI. After the technical steps are done, there's usually a business downtime planned. Here are several steps to be executed. This slide shows the three main tasks from our area. First, we have to implement the customizing that is required for business partner and CVI setup in S4HANA. For example, we must change the synchronization direction to business partner as leading object, updating customers, vendors, and contact persons. This includes synchronization options as well as respective mappings. Here, we are usually import one or more transport requests that were created before, after conversion of development and consolidation systems. A step that is influenced by and influences the business partner synchronization is the initial run of the HCM sync report. This report takes care of integrating employee master data with business partner and user identity. A third major activity, we should check some basic functions for maintaining business partners, for example, field attributes and business partner transaction itself. With go live, we have to monitor our CVI interface again. This time, the interface works in the other direction, from business partner to customer and vendors. To conclude this unit, I want to highlight and share our CVI cookbook. It is publicly available. It covers almost all the information I provided during this session. It contains more detailed information on the main steps and considerations I just presented. It comprises how to set up business partner and important settings for CVI. It provides some accelerators like an Excel spreadsheet to analyze existing number ranges and derive business partner numbers. And it points out to some helpful standard reports. The cookbook is available in the SAP Help Portal. I have attached the link to this picture. Thanks for listening. 
We have now finished Unit 6, Customer and Vendor Integration and Synchronization. In the next unit, I will proceed with tips and tricks for business partner synchronization that we experienced from several projects. Thank you and see you in the next unit.